certainly one of the most popular of all of uh, Emerson's uh, writings is his uh, American Scholar essay. It's been quoted many, many times. It used to be standard uh, reading in American high schools. I guess that's not the case anymore. Uh, it's just hard for them to read, or maybe we've just dummied things down. I don't know. But um, it was a standard. It was a classic. Many students were required in American high schools to, to memorize all or part of it anyway. It was uh, delivered in the summer of 1837. Back then, uh, Harvard uh, would graduate its classes in July, and the uh, the graduating class, of course, they'd have several different ceremonies, um, uh, different kinds of events, and speakers that would come along. This was an interesting graduating class because this was Henry David Thoreau's uh, graduating class, and uh, of course, Thoreau had just recently read Emerson's Nature, got a copy of it in the in the Harvard Library, and just went nuts over it. Thought it was the most uh, most profound thing he'd ever read. So he really was. This was at the peak of when Thoreau was discovering Emerson. Uh, Phi Beta Cap, of course, is an honor society uh, that goes back to 1776 at William and Mary, and uh, the oldest honor society in the. United States uh, and uh, and uh, was a very highly respected intellectual society there at Harvard for many many years still is uh, and so the students who were members of the Phi Beta Kappa Society and the faculty would invite a speaker to come and speak to the graduating seniors and uh, offer their thoughts the interesting thing historically is that in the spring of 1837, the 19th century's version of the Great Depression had begun. The Panic of 1837 that led to runs on different banks in Philadelphia, Boston, and New York had created a huge economic um, sort of vortex that had sucked the entire country into a depression. It was, it truly was a, a, a devastating event, and it's hard to underestimate its impact on both the economy, American history, but particularly um, literature. We're going to talk a bit about it a little bit later, but uh, it is the thing that was the what, what what was going on at the time that really was the news generator. People like Henry David Thoreau, who graduated from Harvard that very year saw their job prospects evaporate before their eyes. Hey, sound familiar? Um, the other thing that um, that it did was it uh, uh, sort of uh, sparked different uh, individuals that we now know very well to literary careers. Um, Hawthorne decided to begin writing more and trying to publish more of his short stories as a way of making money. Melville decided to go out to sea. Uh, Poe began picking up the pen to write whatever he could to be able to make ends meet. So it had a tremendous influence on the rise of American literature and the literary careers that were associated with its key figures. Um, the topic of the American scholar was a very common one for the Phi Beta Kappa lecture. You go back through the records and you just see everybody and his dog was, was, was delivering speeches on this topic. It was a pretty worn out topic. But what I think is really interesting and what makes the, the, the lecture by Emerson so special is that he decides to do something very different with it. Uh, this is his most complete call for a national literature. We talked about that in previous lectures. And that was expected uh, that the person would get up and say, oh, we need our own literature, we need our own American this and American that, and we need American historians and American writers and American philosophers and so on and so forth. And they make a big bow to that and rah, rah, wave the flag and all that kind of stuff. So that was not un unexpected on the part of Emerson. But what he really does is he, he combines this with a critique of the modern tendency towards specialization and division of labor. Um, it, 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 it is also a kind of backhanded, a little bit more polite than we'll see with the Divinity School address, a little bit more uh, um, uh, you know, elegant, if you will, uh, critique or, or, or indictment of modern education as being sort of a bunch of museum curators of ideas. In other words, colleges, in Emerson's address here, as you'll see, aren't generating new knowledge. They're not generating thinkers. They're creating memorizers, and they're basically just museum curators putting ideas on shelves and requiring everybody to become familiar with old stuff. That's his key critique there. So, uh, you know, it's a hybrid lecture in that it brings together sort of this nationalistic patriotic call for American thinkers, but there's some subversive stuff in there, certainly if you look even a bit below skin deep level. Certainly one of the most popular of all of uh, Emerson's uh, writings 